Who are they using it? They're using it. Look at that. Good for you, AMD. <laughs> Hey everyone, today we're tearing down the AMD RX 7600 video card. This is the reference card, and it's pretty small. We actually just took apart the 4060 Ti, and this card, I think the reviews are going up one day in advance of the 7600. So, basically launching at the same time. Uh, Sizing-wise, 7600 is a little bit, little bit uh, shorter, but they're not too different, ultimately. Actually, it's more like that, I suppose. And we're going to take it apart, see what it looks like. See how the thermal design is. We already have a review on the channel for this card. So if you want to see how it does, how the value is, and the thermal numbers, check the review. But in this one, we're focusing on assembly quality and the thermal design of it, especially the mechanics of it. We brought you this video with store.gamersnexus.net and our affordable GPU teardown 10-piece toolkits. Also, our solder and project mats and our large volt mod mats. Every time you see a GN Store ad, that means we're further accomplishing our goal of reducing reliance on PC hardware advertisers. The store just got a fresh restock of tools for your PC building, including the 10-piece kits with custom ground hex heads for clearing SMDs, multiple options for Phillips and Allen drives, and more. Our projects and solder mats have also been highly received by the community, offering an extremely heat-resistant surface that works for random projects or for electronics repair. And finally, this video is also brought to you by our large volt mod mats, a mainstay that's ever popular for its massive anti-static conductive work service and pinout diagrams for PC building. Head to store.gamersaccess.net to support us directly. We'll do the quick external walk around first. So, Overall, let's just look at the sizing because that will be quick, but we're going to defer to the mod mat. This was not intended to be a mod mat plug, but it's going to be one now. You go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab one of these if you like. Where does that put us? So it's about a 20 centimeter lawn design, 200 millimeter lawn for the height. Well, height standard actually, so pretty standard. PCIe slot height, two slot design, no extra thickness, just like the 4060 Ti. So the cards are finally getting narrower. On price, as we said in the review, there's a $300 card. So finally, as well, it's coming back down to a much more affordable class. Uh, it's been a while since we've had something like this. Externally, looks like only four screws on the back holding the back plate on. So they've still got the three painted fins, even on the cheap model. It's an eight pin connector on this one. Partners can do whatever they want. Someone might do two. All of your legal text is back here. They have put it in the, the least visible spot because I think all the manufacturers struggle with it being ugly. And then uh, three display port, one HDMI. So very simple overall. I don't see a thermistor in the fan, which is really not a surprise. They have that on the 7900 XTX reference model. They hide a thermistor in here to get the inlet temperature, which is actually pretty cool. Could be used in, in creative ways by uh, an end user with a plan, but this one does not do that. So we're gonna get straight into the teardown because there's really not much else to talk about externally. This is how the 4060 Ti ended up shaping up, just for reference, not that the PCB side really matters that much, but uh, this card does extend out to here, so they're using more of the full cooler spacing and he's not doing a flow through, which is totally fine. It's worked, worked for a long time, a couple decades for cards of this power target without major issues for the most part. We'll talk about how the thermals did on this one in the review. But uh, so they're doing two fans straight down into a fin stack. The fin stack is exhausting out the top here. They've done well to not cover it with just a ton of plastic crap. So there is actually room for the air to get out. Then on the bottom, same thing. The shroud doesn't extend past the fins that much, so there's plenty of room for it to exit. Although, of course, it will just run into the motherboard, but that's, you can't really escape that. So, uh, let's get started. We got one, two, three, four Phillips one screws. I'll be doing the work. There's a mod mat under the solder mat, so you got two options. The mod mat is a larger surface for PC building, features wiring diagrams, a grid, and just a lot more space in general, plus anti-static conductive. And the solder mat is a high heat resistance insulative silicone mat. There's our fourth screw. They are doing this red triangle design again. Uh, there's no function here. It's just something they're doing for some flare. No, oh, yeah, okay. Ooh, are they using it? They're using it. Look at that. Good for you, AMD. <laughs> they're, uh, they're using the back plate. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> They've come a long way. So, uh, back plate here is metal, 
which is good. I mean, they're sinking into the metal. They, there's uh, no finning here, but they've got just a lot of surface area. And uh, we've said this a lot before. It depends on the card. Sometimes sinking heat through the backside does basically nothing. It's like one degree difference to the front side temperatures for components. Sometimes it can do a lot. We've seen up to like, I think it was seven to 10 degrees on the old MSI Edge due to a lot of just poor design decisions they made where the backplate really helped. Anyway, they're sinking heat through the back of the memory modules. So looks like we've decided to do that for three out of four <laughs> for some reason. There's a fourth one here on the other side. Uh, it's lonely, it doesn't get a thermal pad. Not really sure why they came to that decision. These are some massive thermal pads though. These are like really thick. Without compression, they're about 3.7 millimeters. So that might be marketed as a, like sold to them as a four mil and it compresses a bit. That's pretty thick thermal pad. Uh, thicker, not better for thermal pads, but the thing that matters is that they're able to make contact with the back plate, which they do. So that thickness is required here because there's a lot of depth in the plate, um, especially to accommodate these round head screws. And then they've got four spring tension screws, no leaf spring on this one. So just the screws themselves are spring tensioned. So now we're gonna decouple the heat sink from the PCB front side. Twenty screws so far, but wait, there's more. Okay, PCB should be free at this point. Oh, I missed one. There's another screw. <laughs> so just for some context for people. Uh, we talk a lot about like screw quantity, ease of replacement, and stuff like that, but it is actually important to have sufficient screw count for pressure distribution. So really what you're looking for when a company uses a lot of screws like, like this design is relatively high for how small it is. The important part, first and foremost, is if they're evenly distributed enough to sort of clamp it all down to the heat sink. Helps with sag, but it also helps with getting even pressure distribution across the GPU silicon and then making sure the card doesn't like pull away at any one point. So there is a value to the screws with, if they're not going completely overboard like the RTX 20 series did, but it just depends on the card design. Okay, there's a cable right there. So looks like I might be able to just disconnect it from here, which would be a nice change. Just remember to grab the connector header, not the wires itself. And if you have trouble with it, then um, walk away for three days and come back when your fingernails are longer. <laughs> All right. So, die, let's do a measurement on that. So this is a 13.26, let's call it 13.3, by about 16, 15.8. There's some error in there. This is not the most accurate tool uh, because what we're actually measuring is the diffusion barrier or the structural silicon and not the actual silicon that is uh, hosting all the circuitry, all the components. Just for comparison, NVIDIA is at about a 13, 15, 13 by 15 or 13 by 15.2, something like that. They're actually pretty close in size, not, not exact, but uh, so AMD normally doesn't print anything on its GPU, but let's look anyway. Yep. They have gone with the phase change, as far as I can tell anyway, phase change thermal interface material, which just means they apply a sheet of something that's pretty close to thermal based and it melts uh, once they seal it all up and run it the first time. So that's pretty standard for basically all cards these days, helps with longevity. For the VRM layout, so almost all the VRM is over right of the GPU core from your orientation right now. And we've got a couple of outlier components. So uh, there's one phase over here. I'm assuming both of these phases actually are probably for memory. Uh, I don't know if these two are gonna be for memory as well. My assumption is yes, we could probe it with a DMM and double check, but uh, but that to me, given the inductor difference is probably four for memory. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six for core probably. And then for memory layout, we've got two memory modules north of the GPU and two east of it. Uh, thermal pad contact goes to a base plate, 
It's a very standard construction. This is like old school approach. They're not trying to do anything fancy. And that's not bad. This is a simple GPU. No reason to spend a bunch of money on a fancy modern solution that's totally unnecessary for this, um, this power, this heat load. So copper cold plate sticking through an aluminum base plate. The aluminum base plate, let's see if we can separate. I think we can separate it right here. This is, this is basically RTX 20, 20 era construction, which is okay. That's what we saw on their 7900 as well. No vapor chamber, which also makes sense. Cost savings on a card that would have no use for one. Or at least would benefit in other ways before it would benefit from a vapor chamber. Okay. There's the base plate. So they've got a thermal pad, relatively thin, like a one mil or less. That contacts all the MOSFETs over here. And uh, looks like a pad for, I think that lines up with another FET. Got another pad up here for a memory VRM MOSFET. And the base plate syncs the memory modules and the VRM components into it. Uh, it's got some extra surface area here. This is a very older standard approach. And, uh, and that handles all of your cooling isolated for the VRM and the memory, which is going to be cooled in part by air coming down through and in part by the limited contact it has to the fin stack. But because there's no pad between the two metal pieces here, um, it's mostly being sunk by this. So then we get to the rest of the heat sink. So there's your clean copper cold plate. And above that is just a base plate for the retention. And that sinks into ultimately a set of, it looks like two heat pipes. So you got one heat pipe here and one below it. Both of these pipes converge centrally here, cross through the middle, and that's cutting right through the middle of the core here, giving it most of the, the coverage of the core. It might be a little bit of sort of gap over there, but uh, this is, this is pretty, pretty good. What you want with heat pipes is to cross as much of the core as possible. So having more heat pipes, if they're not cutting across and, and as even a spread as they can is kind of useless. They could have maybe added two more and benefited from it, but the cost starts going up a lot. Um, and this seems like maybe something the partners could step in and bulk up if they wanted to. Uh, I don't think AMD's trying to compete with them yet. They're not pulling in NVIDIA yet. For the fin stack, pretty simple. Some raised areas, some lower channels to accommodate the fans. But this is really, there's not much to talk about here. It's, it's fin stack, it's got some heat pipes, got a copper slug, and that recaps it. For the fan layout, two fans, three screws holding them in. These are Delta fans. This is a 0.45 amp 12 volt fan. And there's two of them. Cable routing is pretty simple. So this is what plugs into the board. They've routed it under this actually separate piece of metal that they've screwed down. So this is just to serve as a clamp to hold the cable in place, prevent it from uh, ever straying into the fan and causing noise. It cuts across here, bridges and connects with the other fan, uh, which also runs under its own retention that's screwed in. And then that's it. So these are also pretty simple. Just for fun, for some comparison. So these are a different price class product. The NVIDIA one's $100 more. So uh, power, power density is maybe a little bit higher per area on this card. And then the heat sink is also, as you would expect, going to be capable of handling a little bit more heat. But a big thing to remember here is that NVIDIA is actively trying to get into making higher quality models where it can maybe eventually do that Apple approach. Uh, of course, they haven't publicly said it this way, but of uh, kind of competing with its partners. And, and this is the way they have to do that. It's got to be a really expensive solution, relatively speaking. AMD, I think, is just focused on, let's try to get a good GPU out there and let the partners handle as much as they can. Uh, they don't quite have the distribution that NVIDIA does yet, although neither of them have the distribution that their partners do. So they are both outclassed in that capacity by the companies they work with. That's the size comparison, though. For the power and performance, thermals, everything else, you check the review. Uh, the AMD card, we'll see how the thermals look in the testing, but uh, they've definitely gone with a very standard approach. I don't have any massive complaints. Kind of a lot of screws, but the pressure distribution should be fairly solid as a result of that. And um, it's not like they've used a bunch of glue. So the repairability is, is still fine. So that's pretty much it. Very standard design. The surface area is not bad in terms of the fin stack. They could thin the shroud or something to get a little more in there. 
But what's more limited is the heat pipes. So there's two heat pipes, there's a copper cold plate, and the copper cold plate, also not too large, although they've got contact to the GPU, which is the main important thing. So where they end up being limited with this design is not necessarily uh, the overall surface area for the form factor, but rather the speed at which AMD can sink the heat into the cooler itself by these early stages, the first points of contact for a cooler are always the most important to pull the heat away from the product that it's cooling. So they have a relatively rough cold plate, which isn't the end of the world on a lower power, cheaper product. Um, and then they've got two heat pipes and that may speak to some of the thermal numbers we saw in the review and why partners as usual will outperform AMD. But AMD makes the GPU, that's the main thing we care about for purposes of the review. Purposes of the teardown though, if you find a partner model for the same price, depending on who it is, I've <laughs> got some thoughts on that too, then the thermal capabilities of their coolers should probably outperform this one, but that's not a big surprise. It's just different from the direction NVIDIA has gone where they are actively sort of competing with their own partners. So AMD is still in the older mindset of let's focus on the GPU and work with other people to try and sell it. But that's it for the teardown. Nothing crazy. It's not hard to work on. It's a good amount of screws. You'll want to track them, but it's once again, they're not using glue there. You don't need a heat gun to take it apart. It's not like RTX 20 levels of complete insanity on assembly and asinine Apple like hiding all of the screws, 70 of them from your customers. So uh, they're doing okay, at least on that front. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, go check out the review on the channel, subscribe for more, and go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly, like by buying one of these shirts, which around the time this goes up, they'll probably be just about gone. And you can also get the solder mats and mod mats and the toolkit. And we'll see you all next time.